Yo, what's up, Square Pin Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian and professional poker player Clayton Fletcher. Here we discuss having the internet kids on TV shows, Norm MacDonald, being a leader, the Pete Davis situation, and Andrew Tate. This is a really interesting one, and there's some really great stuff behind the scenes on the Patreon. Don't forget the Patreon, uh, www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Yeah, that's um, right. That's Sign where up with us so we can uh, keep doing this. Yeah, that's where we do a lot of the bonus content, listener mail, and a bonus episode like today's bonus episode where we continue our conversation with Clayton Fletcher as we discuss how con- how the consultations we do are going, uh, people not taking advice, uh, more of Pete Davidson's breakdown uh, situation, or, or we break down the Pete Davidson situation, some Bible stories from Dante. This is a fun one and the value of uh, vulnerability. So that's over uh, at patreon.com slash manschool202 where you can support us and keep the show going. And also, uh, Dante does consultations, uh, relationship consultations. You can go to uh, dantenero.com to get those. And for me, if you want a consultation for me, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com and we can set up a relationship consultation uh, for you. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the show. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, we got a special guest in the building. Uh, now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I really mean it. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, first and foremost, I got to talk to my host my partner and partner in crime what up harry what's going on baby you ready to rock and roll i'm absolutely ready to rock and roll i'm, I'm out here living my best life dante thanks to you i'm out here thanks but we're out in the streets that's what everyone says, in the right? streets we just did bing bong bing bong <laughs> fuck your life um <laughs> yo people out here uh, eating let me introduce <laughs> what happened he goes uh they eating he's at the staten uh the hot dog eating contest in coney island yeah, yeah. Yo, they're out here eating 40 glizzies. <laughs> She's 100 glizzies in the mouth. Um, yo, let me introduce my guest. Uh, also, a good, good friend of mine. Friend of the show. Been on the show several times. Uh, the, the, the consummate person of game theory. Uh, <laughs> a comedian extraordinaire. Uh... Father, all star poker player, uh, all player in the, from the Himalayas. All I give it up for my boy Clayton Fletcher. What's going on, Clay? <laughs> What's up? Good to see you guys, man. Same, same, man. It's good to see you. Always good to see you. I know you were trying to, um, trying to come in the studio, but uh, looks like we're moving and we got it. So, uh, we didn't want to wait any longer to get you in. So, that's that's what's up. The time is now. The Let's time go. is now. Plus, the world is ending. It's right. 174 degrees today, <laughs> uh, with zero humidity. Um, this I was I was I was drinking an ice glass of ice cold glass of water, and it caught a fire. So, <laughs> time, <laughs> time is short. So yeah. we need to get you in and get this information out before to we the all fans die. before we all die. Everybody trying to get a little bit of ass. Before the world ends, the frogs and the locusts are coming, so it's going down. What's going on, Clay? How you, bro? Man, a thousand plagues coming our way, but nothing could stop us. That's it. We still, we still doing it, looking good though. Yeah. You know what I mean? World's ending, and we still looking good doing it. That's no great. Doubt. Going um, down, swinging, baby. <laughs> I um, how's the baby? How's the baby? My baby mm-hmm. is six. <laughs> Holy. That's how oh, long it's shit. been. Yeah. Wow. I forgot it was that long, Clay. She's going to first grade. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And mine's is three. I'm going out to England uh, Sunday. So um, mine's turns three. I'm going out for the birthday party. Nice. Yeah. So it's dumb. I'm, I'm hoping he, he doesn't tell me. Uh, call me, call, start saying brother and mother. <laughs> or what, man? Or what? He's down with Arsenal, whatever. 
<laughs> yeah, they're very impressionable at that age, Dante. You got to be careful. You're yeah, very, I'm not very worried. impressionable. I'm not worried about it. I got, I got this. I got this pimping. He got to know about. That's, That's right. what I mean. You got to get in there while they're young. Yeah. They say three is three. Is I just too bought young. him one of those jeeps. I bought him a jeep, naturally a two seater, so him <laughs> and his chick could ride out. You know what I'm saying? There you go. <laughs> Got a little two seater so you can rock out with the radio, rock out with the radio, Bluetooth radio, you know, doing it like just taking names, kicking ass, you know what I'm saying? Doing it, doing what it do. So, got the uh got the subwoofer in the back for baby shark. Of you course, get, of course, you gotta get the of bass. Course. You gotta Coco really Melon raise the bass on baby shark. <laughs> baby shark with the bass, so crucial, man. It's crucial. Yeah, it is. And it was he fuck with he fucks with the little pigs. Peppa okay. pig. Yeah, Peppa Pig. He loves Peppa Pig. Yeah. Peppa pig. Right. Which incidentally kind of looks like um Sheba Mason. Give it a f- <laughs> shout out to Sheba. That's inside baseball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. they talk like Peppa Pig over in England, so he's gonna fit right in. They do talk about Peppa Pig. Is it it's kind of Peppa Pig is kind of whack because all they do is just put different antlers, antlers on the different fucking the cow looks like the pig. They just put Cow spots on them. The pig looks like the pig. The bird looks like. A... I'm like, all right, whatever, dog. Now, and... now here's here's the real problem with Peppa Pig. I didn't know we were going to get into this, but I'm right, willing. Let's to, get into I'm it. Let's go there. Let's let's go there. We, <laughs> listen, nobody <laughs> can say we're not tackling the hard topics. You know uh, what I'm saying? The, the issue with Peppa Pig is that almost every episode, the father is an idiot. Yeah, and this oh, is yeah. the problem I've always had with. With children's television, sitcoms. with grown-up television, sitcoms. Yeah. It's, it's always the big joke is, oh, daddy doesn't know how to find his way back to grandma's house. And, you know, daddy pig's really fat. Isn't it funny how fat and stupid our father <laughs> is? <laughs> yeah, and it's the same old joke. And in real life, years. you don't, a bitch, a bitch traveling without no direction is on a paper boat on a lake of fire. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Damn right. Damn right. Heading that- for destruction. Yeah, at least Daddy Pig showed yeah. up. You know, yeah. Daddy Pig's in the house, right? Why are we giving Daddy Pig? What about the next house where Daddy Pig took off? Daddy <laughs> Pig ain't even there. He, was, he said he was going out for milk, and he never came back. That beaver dad, <laughs> he never even came around. He didn't even sign the, the birth certificate. Not once. The beaver, so. he stepped out. The the my, All the marsupials, you know how they just hang right. out in the trees and drink. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do crystal meth. Mm. But I'm, whatever. <laughs> You got to really watch the. You got to really watch Peppa Pig, but it's all there. It's all yeah, subconscious. It's all there. You really it's, gotta. It's 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 really a spinoff of The Wire if you really break it down. Yeah, it is very yeah. much so. Yeah, very it is. much so. There's a lot I'm, of. Political I'm a little strikes. worried because my son might end up being Omar. So. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Su- Susie Sheep, you know, she <laughs> she's funny, nothing but trouble. I'll tell you that right thing, now. Darnell is still playing a crackhead. It's crazy. So- <laughs> <laughs> Some things never change. Oh, man, it's good to see you, bro. I miss you, man. I really yeah, I miss, miss you. you. Too. I haven't seen it, you guys before the pandemic. Yeah. 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 It's been a while. It's funny because um, I often wonder what um, I, I, I wonder if motherfuckers, the fans think I'm full of shit. Because I'm, I I I I say to people a lot, like I like Clayton is genuinely a a good friend of mine. Uh, one of the dudes that just even though we even though we don't hang out, it's like there's a there's a love that the minute we hook up, it's like where we pick up where. We, but I got a lot of dudes like that. I mean, Clayton is definitely on the on the higher level up, but, uh, but Harry will tell you, I mean, if the, if the, if the fans don't believe me, Harry will tell you, there's a lot of dudes that I, that I fuck with, fuck with. There's a lot yeah. of dudes I don't fuck with. A lot of people and I don't fuck usually, with, yeah, but. And I don't bring them on the show. You know no. what I mean? No. So I'm lucky enough no. to have. You have to do the right thing. They got to make some major men's. You, yeah. yeah. But and I'm the older a, you get, that list grows longer and uh, longer. It, well, naturally, you yeah. give a fuck about, or don't yeah, give a fuck about. I, I'm, you don't I'm have just, time, you know. I it's just uh it is it's a thing, man. I mean, like I we had Simeon on, crazy ass Simeon. I love Sim, and then have Kareem on, and we had you know Ali's. I mean, I mean Godfrey has been. And these, these are dudes that I genuinely got a lot of love for, and uh, you know, real kind of real separate kind of dudes. And it's it's a funny thing. I want, one of the things I wanted to get into was it's like. 
you get to a, there's certain dudes that are built to be somebody's boy. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Like there's du- dudes in comedy who open for a dude, yo, that's his, that's so and so's boy. And I and I say this to Harry all the time, like I'm just not built, even though I'm not as big as as a lot of the other comics, but I'm I'm also not built to be somebody else's boy. You know, their second. Like, You're not it, built to be their second. Yeah, like well, like I just yeah. can't be the go get the coffee dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm. I'm not the go get the coffee dude. And to be honest, I don't treat my dudes like I don't treat no, Harry never. like the go get never. the coffee. Like, I don't want to be treated like that. So I don't treat even if you ever do that. You're like, man, my back is fucked up. Can you do such and such? Can you do a favor, please? And go, thank you, please. Yeah. One time I remember that because one time I had to get I think from your room, I had to get you go. Go. Can you go upstairs? My back is fucked up. Can you get my wallet or my phone upstairs? And I almost slipped on some lube and tore my ACL. (laughs) (laughs) The floor was covered in lube. I don't know what it was. Yeah, it was a lot of lube. It was that 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 arrows pure. But I did that that slip where I was like. I was okay, but I was like, oh my Ooh. God, one more, one more quarter of an inch. That would have been a 10 yeah, months was, of rehabilitation. It was like a, a TikTok video. With yeah. a dude on- <laughs> <laughs> my eyes, my eyes open real big. I'm like, oh my God, that was a life changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, you know, you never, never treated me that way. Like just, you've treated me as an equal, like you teach me shit, but you know, you've never like treated me as an errand boy. I went through the same thing because I got spoiled by you to a degree. There's a couple times career wise. You hung out in, with other. I was in position. I did. I always did a one off that never worked out where yeah. I was in the position because there's guys who will have these satellite things where, you know, you have your like coaching tree almost where they they take on a comic and a couple years later they end up big and, you know, they take them under their wing. And I some of the egos involved. It was like clear. Oh, this is not going to work out. I made it yeah. one night where they were giving me a little attitude and I pushed back, you know, and then they're like, oh, yeah, this ain't going to work. And then I never heard from them again. Yeah, I'm the same way, guys. I mean, honestly, like, I don't know how many opportunities that I missed out on because I'm not good at kissing people's ass. You know, I'm just I got to be I got to be myself. I'm a very independent man. I cannot, uh, you know, just go get your coffee and, and tell you how great you are all the time and stuff like that. So, I mean, who knows? Like, I could have been somebody's opening act or whatever. I mean, but you know what? Some- I'm going to tell you something. Even guys who are not, who are like that, too, I can't even do it with them. You know what I mean? <laughs> and not yeah. that they treat me like that at all. But it's just the kind of, like, it's like two big junkyard dogs in the yard. And even though they have a mutual respect, it was like, yeah, dog, but this is my yard, man. Like, yeah. you you too big, you too strong. Like you, you gotta go get your own junkyard. You know what I mean? Yeah, like totally. And, and and even and it's also like they don't, they get it too because they not. You know they respect you and every. I was hanging out with Ali Sadiq. I love Ali Sadiq, but I'm also like this is is you know I gotta make my own way. Godfrey's another beast. That's my man, but I got to do my own. You know what I mean? And, and and other guys are really comfortable with sliding into that, that I'm that dude. Shout out to Dave Chappelle and his uh, entourage. Um, <laughs> just, you know, just niggas goggling balls all the time. And I don't really, I just don't have that. I don't have that ability to do that. I mean, it's a, like Harry said, it'd be a one-off. And then yeah. I'm like, yeah, dog, I'm out. You know, it's never, you know, yeah, it's never oh, it's nasty. Just, it's just it, there's just a vibe there that happens where it's just not like, yeah, this is not the role that person needs is a second. And yeah. you're not a second that uh, you're one yeah. A, one B situation. And you even in sports that never works out. Yeah. Somebody got to be QB. And then if you're not one A, then you got to they got to release you or send you off somewhere else. Yeah. So, yeah. So I used, say, I used say to tour. Yeah, I used to tour with Norm Macdonald. You know? oh, okay. Right. And uh, you know, he looked up to me because he loves poker and oh I'm way, wow, way better at poker than Norm could ever be, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh I mean uh, <laughs> all humility aside, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he was a great comedian, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of had a mutual respect. Like yeah. I thought he was a, you know an amazing comedian to watch. Yeah, and then he like, you know, whenever we weren't 
doing shows, we were talking poker, playing poker, trying yeah. to find a poker game somewhere. Right. And so that, that kind of worked because it's like, you know, he thought I was funny, but yeah. I think he only wanted to work with me because he's like, oh, this guy can go on the road with me and teach me how to play cards and play cards. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but did you how long did you did you, you know, ride yeah, like, with him? Yeah, like six months. Really? Yeah. And yeah, we we got to know each other pretty well. He started oh, yeah. doing a lot of jokes about um like death and going into a coma and all this kind of stuff. And one day I say, hey, Norm, you know, why you keep writing all this new material about death and mm. stuff like that? And he's like, Well, I'm I, I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> Wow. And I didn't know. I didn't know until he told me. And he said it just like that too, right? He's like, he shrugged his shoulders, like, "Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm dying." Yeah. I was like, "Oh well, I'm not going to ask any more questions." <laughs> you did you think he meant it figuratively, sort of like, no, "Hey, we're uh, all dying," or you you got the sense he was saying, "I'm dying." He didn't mean it, he didn't mean it like uh, yeah. poetically. Yeah, like the way the grand scheme of things, we're all dying. You know. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't talking about like the plagues that are coming, like you did at the beginning of this episode. He was like. <laughs> You know, you want to get into it, I'll let you know. And I was like, okay, so uh, how about them cowboys? You know, <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that's incredible that he let you in on that because he didn't tell a lot of people about that. That was the yeah. whole thing. He didn't mention that to almost uh, almost anybody. Yeah, he really kept it under wraps. I mean, there were just a few comics that that were real close to him that knew, and of course, like you know, his close family knew. But yeah, he was not trying to have like some kind of farewell tour. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? He was on tour. Right, right, right. But like right after right after Norm died, I wrote this joke and I said, you know, uh, I was his opening act for a while. And, you know, it's it, I lost so much work <laughs> when he passed away. <laughs> and like, I just I just know Norm would love that joke. He would have loved the joke. Anything else I ever wrote. Like that yeah, would yeah, be yeah. his number one favorite joke in the whole act. So, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I still bust it out like on his anniversary or whatever. You know? Yeah, it's weird because, um, you know, I, I one of the things that, that that illustrate that is I always ask people like who is uh, who's who's um, Bruce Lee's best friend? Do you know what I mean? Who's Michael Jordan's best friend? Who's Muhammad Ali's best friend? Now we all know the guys who were were that they would consider him their best friend, right. but it wasn't. It, it's not a lot of times where you see guys with that kind of that kind of power to have. You know, like you have no idea who their best friend was because they were so busy trying to trying to make these great moments that a lot of times they didn't have time to, to, to cultivate the friendships. And that's kind of one of the things that I feel is the case with me and me and Clayton is it's like, we don't really hang out. Um, I just got off the phone with Joe DeRosa. Joe DeRosa is another dude. I actually got off the phone with Joe DeRosa and, uh, and uh, fucking Godfrey before, you know, like these are dudes I, I fuck with, but I don't, I mean, I can't tell you the last time I hung and we, we, you know, we would call each other up and, uh, and uh and and trash each other uh <laughs> like, yeah. you know i'd look at my phone and and uh godfrey would text me you stink <laughs> <laughs> you know and i think that like people that aren't in the comedy world don't really understand yeah like what we do i mean like if you hang out with a bunch of comedians there's going to be just things that would be said that's not meant for public consumption. You oh, know yeah. What I mean? yeah. And then those things end up getting out in the public. And, it's like, and then oh, they're like, oh, my. Yeah. This person's a racist or a, a sexist or you know, they, they start thinking all these terrible things. But it's just when we're all alone together it's and there's different... no cameras rolling, there are no restrictions. Yeah, yeah there is no. <laughs> there's no restrictions on what you want to say. It's a friend of mine. A friend of mine. Uh, he was uh, he got molested by his uh, his father. And I said that he was so needy. His he was he, that he's such a needy person. That's why his father left his mother. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely doesn't look great in in the written word out of context. If but you know what, it barely sounds nice in context, <laughs> right? Even, no, but, and listen, I said that to Keith Robinson, and he goes, "Oof, yeah. oof, <laughs> you went too far, man." Yeah, man, and then Come he was on, like. Man. But he used to make sweet love to him while playing Sly the Family Stone. We are family. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, how's the uh, how's family life going? How's daddy life going? And and what's going on with that? Man, I'm all about it. Summertime is great because you know she's been out of school. Yeah. Um, she was in camp and stuff when I was out in uh, Vegas for the World Series of Poker. How'd you do this year? Uh, not as well as I did the last time, but uh, I had fun. I lost a little bit of money, but you know mm. that's part of the game. You know, yeah, yeah. nobody wins every time. But I, I had a you know good opportunity to do some commentary for CBS Sports Network. Oh, nice, which was nice, really fun. Yeah, I mean, they had me on as like the color commentator, and they said, you know, don't worry too much about you know over analyzing the hands. Just like make it fun for people yeah. who are watching. They might not understand, so it's kind yeah. of fun. You know, I got to like talk poker, but also use my comedy skills a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That was really cool. And, you know, uh, I got to see some people I, like, like you guys, like I haven't seen in years, yeah. you know, because we've been locked down and, and yeah. everything is kind of cool to have everything back to normal. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was, a, it was a good time. I really enjoyed it. It's like the, probably the one thing I look forward to the most Yeah. every year is the world series. I go out there for six weeks and just, you know, play almost every day. Just yeah. you know, try to get that money. It's that get, long, huh? Six yeah. weeks. I didn't realize yeah. it's that big. A, a it's kind of like the Summer Olympics. You know, it's just Poker Olympics. It's like eighty-eight yeah. different events. So, and how does you that know work? what you call it was going to teach me? Clayton was going to teach me, and he thought that I would have a good head for it. But still I don't do. like to gamble. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I still do think you'd have a good head for it because you do like to invest. Yeah. And like, I don't even think about poker as yeah, as gambling. I think of it as investing. Like if you got stocks or Bitcoin or whatever else people yeah, invest yeah. in and you see it goes down a little bit every day or even if it goes down a lot one day. Yeah. You know, it's going to go up sooner or later because yeah, yeah. you, you're on the right side of things. So um, it's that's difficult for me to it. play the game, though. Like I, I, I get bored of the game. Yeah. And maybe because I don't understand the strategy of it that much and I'm more, you know, I'm, I'm less engaged with it but it's an interesting thing um and in one of the things with 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 clayton was clayton used to literally use uh poker game theory to meet women to pick up women in relationships in business and everything and and one of the things I've, i say this a lot when um uh, you know um true wisdom is the understanding of underlying concepts how they relate to situations that seem irrelevant, but really are not. And so when you understand the basic cosmic and universal truths, you can always reapply them to, uh, to different situations. Um, yeah. That, you, you said that really well. I mean, that's, yeah. that's very well said because the thing about sitting at the poker table is like who you really are yeah. comes out. Yes. And you can't yeah. hide it. You can't hide it. In what sense there. does it come out? Like, where does it come out, Clayton? Yeah. So uh, say some people can't handle uh, losing, right? So you see him, he's doing great. He's playing great. And then he loses one big pot. And now his brain goes crazy, starts spiraling. Mm. And that same guy is the type of guy that's going to be real good with his wife all day long. And she says one thing and it sets him off to yeah. where his head kind of explodes. You right, know? right. Other people, they just have a bad relationship with money. Right. Or like mm. what Dante's referring to is he doesn't really understand. Um, well, he hasn't cultivated the type of patience. Right. That's required to like sit there for 12 hours. And I, play, I still right. believe he could do it. Yeah, he could do it if he really put his mind to it. If he had a, a if passion I wanted for it. To like, do it. I, yeah. yeah. Like if you really want to do it, you got a passion for it. Like I yeah. do. But yeah. what happens is when you're sitting there playing poker, you find out who you are. And if you're really paying attention, you see who other people are, too. Like there's a crucial point in any poker tournament. When if you bust out next, if you're the next player who loses all his chips, mm -hmm. you're going to win zero dollars. Right. And if you can just survive until the next guy, maybe you're going to win, you know, like in the main event, fifteen thousand dollars. Right. That's the difference. Now, some guys, when they get to that point where they're almost what we call in the money. Right. Their personality is I'm going to fold even if I have pocket aces yeah. because I don't want them to get cracked. And then I have to go home and tell my wife I lost ten thousand dollars playing the main event right and then there's other guys like me that's like i'm looking for those guys that can't wait to fold and i'm gonna bluff the hell out of them right right and you find out it, it's like kind of a microcosm of life it's like yeah there are those who who shrivel and who cower when uh it matters most and there are those who uh you know just take the bull by the horns so to speak yeah. and just and go for it and now there's been times when i've done that kind of strategy and I end up losing and mm. I end up going home with nothing. Right, I lose right, that money. Right. 
but I know that it's the right play. So right. you got to learn to separate like the, the strategy from the results. Right. But just because right. you didn't win doesn't mean you didn't make a good play. And right. also, by the way, just because you won doesn't mean you played well. You might have just got lucky. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I mean, and comedies like that, everything. Yeah. What's, uh, you know, I've been thinking about this. Uh, this is like, you know, I, I often wonder, uh, you know, we've been doing this podcast for um, 10 years, nine, almost 10 years now. Wow. Right. Never missed the Tuesday uh done it and uh we got some big things coming where we're getting ready to move the platform and and do some things and bring back all the old episodes so you can go rummage through the whole archive and everything we're working on that now nice. but um what's interesting is i i i realize i've been saying this for a long time but but the, the theory is is growing that um there's only two percent there's two percent out of everybody in the world there's two percent real ones Right. So, you know, um, I'm a liberal, you know, when I look at the insurgent, the the, the insurgents, the j January 9th. Right. Here's what happened. There's really only two percent of those motherfuckers. That's that's really about that smoke. Everybody else is kind of swept up in the moment. Um, I think you have another three percent of motherfuckers. Like, for instance, when I was running around in the streets. And I, you know, like I had a whole crew of motherfuckers that I was hanging out with. Um, I was the two percent, right? The two percent. If something was going down, I probably was the first one that threw the first blow. I was the first one that recognized mm -hmm. that this was going left. Not that I was instigating it was really go. I mean, which is funny because, you know, Harry had to learn that. For, for a while, a while. That, it took a couple of years, <laughs> took a couple of years where Harry kind of thought I was being reckless. But it's just that I could see so much. You know what you're talking about is you can see ahead. I could see so far ahead. It's like in chess, something else I thought I would I would have the patience for that. I didn't have that. I, I can see 12 steps ahead of the, the 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 while it's happening. I'm already 12 steps ahead. And. Um, so I would, there'd be some kind, I'd be hanging out with a bunch of dudes. We'd be at some party. It would be some other, another crew of motherfuckers. And we would be like, uh, you know, something would go down. Somebody would say something and I could see that it was going to end up physical. So I would take it there first because I knew that they really wasn't there ready to take it. Now I was the 2% or the 1% that would, was willing to do that. No, willing to assess the, the, the threat and then go at it immediately, right? There was another 3% of motherfuckers who were, if they saw me rock, They'd they be ready stood to rock. up. Yeah. Now, would they take, would they be the first one to throw the punch or the first one to take it there? Probably not, but I knew that there was the 3% that, that would be like, all right, well, I guess we, like kind of Harry's kind of like that, like where he would yeah. go, all right, here we go. He'd take his glasses off. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I did a Friday night, by the way. I did a Friday night when that Put guy. Glasses that, off? No, I didn't have my glasses at that <laughs> point, but I was uh, Christine was with me. Oh, and oh, oh. I would, the, this guy was drunk and it, he was like some white frat kid or something. Mm. He's a big kid, too. And Dante was fucking around with him because he was drunk and high. Mm. And then he was just getting very nasty. He was just cut like doing the cut the throat motion, like yeah, knock it off. Know. And then, and then he goes, gave yeah, me the, the wrong. He the waved you away. Yeah. The, yeah. And do Dante your thing, goes, do your jokes there. Yeah. I'm, I'm not the motherfucker to do that with. And it got real <laughs> serious. And, and then he's like, listen, you can enjoy the show or get the fuck out, uh, but you can't talk. So either. And Dante was nice at first with this guy. He literally was like concerned. Like, You're right, kid. Like, you seem high. Fuck. Do you need water? Like genuine shit. And the guy was being nasty. And so my thought was like, all right, if Dante goes down, I got I'm looking at the best friend over there. So I got to make sure he's got a beer bottle there. Like nothing's going to happen. I know nothing is going to happen, gotta be, but I yeah. got to in my head. I go at the very least, if something goes down, I'm taking that guy out because I'm not right. going to let Dante get hit in the back of the head with a Heineken bottle while he's fighting this other kid. And mind you, I'm going to hit this dude with the right hand and I'm going to yeah. hit him with the Probably, left hand. But, Being, I'm, that's the two piece. Yeah. But he, you know, he knows where he's got to fit in. Yeah. So so it's but the, but most people are the fucking the most people are the 97 percent or the 96 percent that ain't ain't you don't want no you ain't going to do shit. 
like you're gonna do shit if everybody's with it. It's like everybody got all swept up in that. And now when you look, when you, you know, when these people are getting put in jail, they'll be like, well, everybody was doing, we just went in yeah. and then it, it, but you wasn't about that. And I always say the part, and and you know, no, no disrespect to the dead, but when remember when they were breaking that window and the lady climbs in through the window and she gets shot in the neck? At the Capitol? Yeah, at the Capitol. January 6th, they never yeah. breached that door. Like nobody oh, those, go after she got shot. The oh, yeah. Door nobody didn't get taken down. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't breach that door. That oh, the, everybody became EMTs. Everybody started doing CPR. Every everybody <laughs> found everything else to do. It was like, Except oh, shit, break down that door. Bitch yeah. got shot. In, uh, yo, this shit is real. And then uh, that whole corridor just shut down. So you 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 know, everybody was, was going to be a civil civil war or the revolution. Yeah, until the bullet, so somebody gets shot in the neck, and then everybody, what's Mike Tyson say? Everybody's got a plan until somebody gets punched in the face. So, <laughs> That's right, yeah. And, and so I started thinking about this, you know, this whole idea about how most, there's a certain, like, now there's a one, I, I say 2% because there's always the 2%, uh, 1% of those are the sociopaths. Like, people that are, are just not right. Right. Mm. And then there's the one percent, the other one percent of that two percent that's ready for the smoke, that is intentful about what their actions that are watching and reading the room at the whole time. Then there's that three percent was like, yo, if it's on, it's on. I guess I guess we rocking. And then there's that 96 that goes, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I just came here with a friend. And 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 so when you start to realize that that small percentage, like when you're in that, when you're in that, even that that three percent, that that well is going down, I guess takes you, pulls you apart from everybody else. And I would and I was thinking about that when you were talking about poker, there's certain dudes, you know, there's people who are there's you got your sociopaths who just you know that it's crazy it just makes no sense then you got very deliberate and intentful and then you got people who will pick up this you know, like i'm uncomfortable with this but i'm i'm still rocking out and you want to try to be you want to try to be the 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 one percent not the sociopath but where your actions and what you do is in is very intentful well you know it's really about leadership yeah i think and like to be a good leader, you have to know how to be a good follower. Sure. You know, and, you know, a lot of times mob mentality comes into play with things like that. January 6th or, yeah. you know, other similar events like the riots and, and stuff like that. Oh, uh, somebody got shot and killed. So let's all steal everything out of CVS. You yeah, know? yeah. OK, these two things are unrelated, but yeah, I'm just going along with it. Yeah. I'm here yeah. in part of the moment. Yeah. Like you're not making any decisions. You just. Uh, kind of like another sheep, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I think to me, it's like everybody has someone that they look up to. Yeah. And when I was out there in Vegas, there's a poker player named Anton Wig. He's a good friend of mine. He is uh, just a beast. You know what right. I mean? He's a real big, strong guy. Mm -hmm. He eats healthy. He takes care of himself. All right. the girls want him. He's great at poker. Mm -hmm. He gets 12 hours sleep a night. He mm. eats well. Well, like everything, like this guy is it's, just living yeah. like a, you know, an actualized yeah. type of lifestyle. You know right, what I mean? Right. So I'm like, I want to rock with this guy. You know, right, and I right. said, I said, let's join the gym. We signed up at UNLV. You sign up at the gym at UNLV. We're working out in the gym and there's a summer uh, NBA summer league is going oh, on wow. and they work out there too. Right. Right. So now I got these like professional level athletes around me. I right. got this world-class poker player that I'm friends with. Who's training me. Yeah. And it just like kind of changed my whole viewpoint and made right. me realize like, you know, if I'm going to be a good leader, I need to be able to recognize when somebody's a little bit ahead of me yeah. and that I can say, all right, now you teach me sensei, right. say, and, and I just let him teach me everything. He got four of us together and said, we're going to have like a little mini gym class. And mm -hmm. I'm going to do you know, personal training. And I'm telling you, this guy is like, you know, he's just ripped. He's a beast. Yeah. And he says, all right, first thing we're going to do, 20 minutes of yoga. And mm -hmm. I was like, what? what? The, like, I did not see that one coming at all. Right, right, right. A big guy like him, he's going to be, all right, we're going to bench, right, we're going right. to deadlift, you know. You know and he's <laughs> you know, like, let's get dirt. this flexibility so we yeah, don't mess right. up he's my like, knees. We got to get our mm -hmm. mind and our spirit yeah. and our souls aligned before we can. 
And by the end, we were doing like real heavy weights and everything. Yeah. But yeah, just starting off with that yoga, I was like, oh man, that that threw me for a curveball. That yeah. showed me yeah. I really do have a lot to learn from this dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an it's an interesting concept. It's one of the things that I I've I've said to, you know because sometimes I'll every once in a while I'll teach a comedy workshop, right? And I haven't been doing it in a while. But what I was saying to them is as, as comics, we get paid for our words. Um, why do you give them away for free? Like, why is why is your jokes and your setups and everything so long when you get paid for the words itself? So give them as least as least amount as possible. And there's a there's an intentful you know, I, everything that you do needs to have an intent. If you don't know why you're doing it, you probably shouldn't be doing it or you need to eat at least at least some. Um, think about why am I doing this? What is the, what's my objective? Uh, what's the objective? How do I get there? And what words am I using to get there? Um, which is a really different way of thinking to kind of slow down. And like, I've been hanging out with Ali Sadiq a lot. And when I, and he's a awesome uh, storyteller, but I realize that he, it, he speaks very slowly, deliberately with each, so that each word has impact. Now, I've said this before, um, Barry Ribs, a comic that we know talks that same way, but then there's no substance. Right. So you almost feel like buyer's remorse because he speaks so deliberately and slow and, and intentful, but then when you look at the substance, there's no substance there. So you feel even worse. You feel cheated because you were giving the attention of something that was going to be important and it's not important. And so now you, you, there's an incongruency in that and, um, and, and that builds this lack of trust. So how, how would you, what would be an example in the dating world where having intent would matter? So Verbally if, picking up if a girl, you're, where would it be? if you're doing, if you're talking to a young lady, um, what is your objective? Because if you're very clear about your objective, then you're not just you're not just yapping and filling the words with with filling the air with words, filling time with words. And and that's really an important thing, because whether you realize it or not, the, the a woman is reading the subtext of what you're saying. Oh, you can't so say that I'm a, a serious person. You have to be a serious person. You can't say that I'm a positive individual or I pay attention to the details. You have to, you have to pay attention to the details and then show that you've paid the attention to the details. And so like, you know, when we talk about laying the five bricks, the second phase, the first phase is to just get over the fear, just being able to socially converse with somebody without um, but even though you're laying a five brick with just like playing a compliment, you're you're doing that with the intention of um, of being more social. But you but there's also a subtext to even that the subtext is I'm being more social, but my intention, I'm not looking for anything in return. So I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to fuck you. I'm not trying to get your number. I'm not I'm just because the thing is when you are when you're talking to a woman and your intention is to fuck her right you're basically she's reading that now that's great if she's already attracted to you and she's in it but if she's not and you're trying to make your case what you're basically saying is you know i know nothing about you but simply because of a physical attraction i'm willing to discount my manhood and everything i am just to get in your pants. And if I'm doing that, um, I feel then that give then that says that I have no worth. I I should be interviewing you just like she's allowed to interview me. Maybe you're not good enough. Maybe I maybe I don't want to be, maybe you're nuts and you're a problem. And I, and so we so when there's that air of eagerness to just take anything. A woman reads that as the fact that you have no self-value. And the thing is now, I mean, everything you said is right on the money, right on the money. The thing is now women get a lot of attention on social media. Sure. You know, um, before Instagram or what have you, mm -hmm. 
uh, a woman would have to like, go out into the world and mm-hmm. you know get all pretty and put on nice right. makeup, nice shoes, and try right. to get men to look at her. Right now, all she's got to do is post a video, and she's getting all that attention. So, what you don't want to be is one of the guys that's just giving that attention you're beautiful you're beautiful oh baby heart 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 fire 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 emoji all this stuff you know (laughs) yeah i mean we've all done it i'm not gonna lie every guy in the world has has done that if a girl is just so fine and you see her on instagram you kind of can't help yourself you want to avoid doing that because you want to try to establish to her that you are uh, a man of of worth yourself and that you are a uh and an asset on the on the rise right right so you are ascending mm. and that she should want to ascend with you right and then i mean that was always my approach prior sure. to my becoming you know married and off the market obviously but my intent was always to just establish that i'm the party i'm the fun guy you know i'm the comedian i'll make you laugh all that stuff mm-hmm. you know and don't worry about it. i got money and everything like that so i kind of check a few of their boxes right off the mm-hmm. bat and then basically kind of like give her a little attention in the beginning and then ignore her the rest of the night. And nine times out of 10, I would find the women would yeah. approach me and try yeah. to, as you say, interview, you know, get interviewed by me right. and start stating their case. Right. You know, like right. I would say to a girl, you know what? Yeah, you're cute and all, but you're too young for me. Mm-hmm. And I just walk away. This is when I was trying to date a girl that was much younger than I. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I would just walk away and start talking to somebody that's closer to my age. And that young girl would be like, what? He thinks that I can't have him because I'm too young. And it kind of, you know, make them think in terms Changes of now the they, power dynamic. And now she has to prove herself. Right. To me. You right. Know? And I think that's a that's a much better position to put yourself in as the man. Sure. Because, sure. you know, you know how many guys are thirsting after all these girls? Like even sure. like the average looking girl on Instagram is getting flooded. Yeah. with dms on a daily basis so just imagine what the hot ones well let doing. me ask you this though if that is the case then doesn't that that in that attention that they get even lessen in value i mean there's a supply and demand i mean there's such a supply of this this internet energy right that it also it also it's to the point where it doesn't even mean anything and so uh uh and as somebody who would actually approach them in real life, I mean, that almost makes that more valuable, you know, yeah. than the attention that they're so accustomed to get in the first place. Well, you're, you're out, out in the world, Dante. You meet beautiful sure. women at comedy shows and things. How many of them do you think are happy? You know, most of the beautiful women I meet are very unhappy. They're getting all about the attention. This? How many people are happy? Well, that's true, too. But you think you know, that the, if, if women really want attention... And mm-hmm. a girl's got, you know, 100 bikini pics on Instagram. She's got yeah. 8 million followers all telling her how hot she is each and every day of her life. You'd think that that would bring all this joy and fulfillment to her. These are some of the most miserable people I've ever met sure. in sure. my life because what they're really trying to find, they can't find yeah. because they're on the Internet instead of out in the st- world. Meeting people and actually yeah. dealing with these social. Di- What's funny is that the um, we just did the. Uh, we just had it. We just had this kid who who kind of is teaches guys pick up young dude, but he was kind of a f- fan of of the show. Yeah. And he did a whole video about, you know, me when we had Pete Davidson on the show and I was teaching Pete like I actually walked Pete Davidson through his old virginity and stuff. He used to call me regular. I don't even know if you remember. He used to call me his dad. Right. I remember that. And uh one of the things is, but because he's so honest, uh, like he's goofy, but he's honest. And because he's honest, this is why now you take him and you put him in the realm of all these A-list celebrities where this, where dishonest, where dishonesty is rampant. Yeah, it's and enormous. On, honesty is, is, is a commodity. This is why, you know, the quality of women that he's been running through in in the business is um is has been so high yeah um, i mean we all have to give pete his props i mean yeah. we, we all knew him in the beginning of his yeah career when he was just a teenage boy yeah nobody was like oh yeah he's so hot he's got big yeah. dick energy nobody thought anything yeah. like that you know like just it's like gangly like kind of nerdy yeah, yeah. like weird weird goofy kid 
But you're right, Dante. I mean, that women do see something in him. And I think that it's the authenticity yes. that he learned through doing stand up. Yeah. Because honestly, I mean, I'm not saying Pete's the greatest stand up in the world. Right, right. But every, and he every, wouldn't say that. I don't he think wouldn't say that, that either. But one thing he is, is genuine. Yeah. And not only that, but I taught him. I was I was always telling him, I said, Doug, you, you, you. This is when he was on. He, he was getting ready to get SNL, but he was already you know, on guy, I go, look, you're the prize. Like you're the one that's doing some, these women that are sliding in your DMS and hitting you on Facebook. They have, they have no idea. I go, you're, you are an upgrade for them. The, the, the interesting thing about that is, um, you know, when, it, you know, initially when he hooked up with Kim Kardashian, she, she says, I, um, she said, she said, he said, this is how he got me. He was like, you want to go for ice cream? <laughs> like, it, it wasn't, let's go to Milan. No. Let's get on my practice. You, you want to go get a double scoop of vanilla. That's it. You want to go get some ice cream? I like ice cream, right? And she's like, oh, this is adorable. But yeah. it was funny because we were talking about this on the show. Is This was before the breakup. Mm -hmm. I said, he's heading for a kick in the dick. And the reason why he's hitting for a kick in the dick is because um, because he doesn't have the this substance. So they a woman wants this these boyish, innocent quality, but she still wants you to be 007 and understand Shakespeare. She wants you to have a great body, but she doesn't want you to spend so much time in the gym that you, you, you're not with it. She wants you to be somebody who can physically protect her, but she still wants you to be able to, to, to have a baby and, and cuddle a baby and change a diaper. And, and, and so there's this dichotomy and this di duality of, that you have to have. And the problem is when when it runs the path and then you you're only this side you're genuine and you're goofy and honest then when she's looking for the the other side of that that's not there and then when all for all intents and purposes she dumped him after he proposed to her yeah you know it's tough though because just the the dynamics of her being much older than he is yeah. um having a lot more money than he yeah. does um, that kind of never works because I think 95 or maybe even more percent of all women, they want a man who can kind of be the leader. Right. You know, we were talking about leadership earlier. Sure. I feel like it really does play into relationships. You know, women don't really want to be in charge of everything. You right. know, they, they'll tell you that they do. But it's like you always say about don't ask the the deer as right. the hunter, yeah. You know? Right, right. They'll right. say they want all these certain things, but uh, you know the proof is in the pudding. Right. And the man who keeps the girl is the man who is you know asserting dominance, and I yeah. don't mean like in a physical way. Right. Not in a not in yeah. a Andrew Tate. No, no, no. I hate you know. that guy. Yeah. No, he's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he's the new guy. He is the new guy. He's the new guy. He's the, he's the worst thing on the, out he there giving out every so much bad advice, like so much yeah. like no. misplaced anger and bad advice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I just think he needs to come out already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was watching him debate. Uh, 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 you know, uh, I don't know if you watch it's Abba. Watch it. Or sneak Hassan, uh, which is the Young Turks, uh, Yank oh, Shank yeah. Uger, his nephew. Oh yeah, a, yeah, I know. He him, has yeah. a, a TikTok. He's pretty famous hit TikTok, and he debates him and demolishes him. Like he starts talking about how women are. Uh, he the 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 debate is. He says how women are, are worse drivers than men. Right. In my position, anytime I've had a car accident, it's always been with a woman. It's always been her mistake. Right. Which is interesting is because you're the one with the. That's all your accident, accidents. And it just <laughs> Technically, it happened, that would make you the bad driver. Like, you could you yeah. you aren't you running into these women or at least at the very least, you're, you're not vicinity. able to you're not able to maneuver. You're such a great driver. You, you know, it's just. The absurdness. Well, he was talking about I saw that clip, actually, uh, and mm -hmm. he was talking about he was bringing up statistics. Now, in my personal feelings are women are bad drivers, right? Just anecdotally. But if somebody goes, I have stats that don't prove that 
I'm like, all right, yeah. I guess I got to look at these stats. Well, right? here's, here's when you, and, even when you think about the stats, though, I mean, like, so he brought up the stats. Yeah. And and he's and Andrew Tate is like, yeah, well, that doesn't matter. Essentially, he went so around he's saying, I believe this my truth. Right. Right. Is, Which is something that he absolutely hates when women do. And the guy, yeah. the uh, Hassan or whatever was pointing out, he absolutely calls women out on, on that shit all the right. time of just right. being emotional, not being fact based. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, if you go, I have all these facts. I can't argue with you. Facts from the auto industry. I'm like, I, I haven't looked. I don't have any facts to back right. this up. The argument is over for now. He, on the other hand, no, it's uh, it's listen, those are facts, like, facts so you want to believe everything that Google said. But here's but <laughs> but you can actually see the 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 sense in it. Here's why you can see the sense. And, and I and I mean, we're all guys. So we're like, oh, I drive better than women. But here's the difference. As men, we're more aggressive drivers. Of course. We take more risk. Of course. And yeah. the reason why insurance is younger insurance is for younger males is that way is because we take more risk because yeah. we're more aggressive. And 100%. so even though we may be better drivers, because we take more risks, we have more accidents. So yeah. or we cause more accidents. It's, it's like one of the reasons why I mean, I mean, I still ride my you still ride bike or no? No, I haven't in a couple of years. I miss it, though. I want to yeah. get another one. I bought a I bought a Ducati um, Diaval, the S. Nice. Uh, it's with the front pegs. But I I always told you, I mean, you and I rode together, but you always saw me. I was rode solo. And one of the things I would say to you is this. There's too when you ride with a group of dudes, there's too many testicles in one yeah. place. It's too much testosterone. It's always everybody's, and that's when people get hurt because there's the ego there. So even if and and here's the thing, I've seen women, um, motorcyclers or people cyclists, um, and you could always tell when it's a woman cyclist unless she's upset because she's just more careful. Careful, yeah. Um, you could t- even when she's got a Helmet, full gear on, full helmet. You go, oh, that's a girl. Yeah. I mean, and well, not, not because of a fat ass or nothing. Like, I'm just saying, yeah, the style. Whereas guys, we're all, ah, 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 you know, we, we. It's just, it's very simple biology evolution. Yeah. Historically, there has been no reward for women taking big risks. Right. And historically, the only men who survived were those who took big risks. Took, that's it's literally in our DNA. Part yeah. of having testosterone is that you are more inclined toward risk-taking. But you're right about a group of motorcycle guys. Everybody's trying to show off, show who's the alpha male, who's the yeah. top dog. And that's when the real danger that's occurs. That's what happens. You, you know? take that, you know, that same testosterone-fueled kind of um you know group dynamic that yeah. happens in a bunch of guys riding bikes that's every single day in poker 99 yeah. percent of poker really? players are men wow. and that's what's going on everybody's like no i'm gonna put mine on the table no i'm gonna put mine on the table right, i'm gonna right. show you i got the biggest one you know and this is kind of what yeah. happens now sometimes. as a poker player right and i the and i can clearly see the analogy between that and dating you know there is a lot of machismo out there but it's not always smart decisions right now, right. Well, right, because, to, well, what do we say? Yeah. What are the things that we always say? Never let emotions emotion have, a have a seat at, seat the, at table. the table. Right. And so, ego is emotion. Is emotion. Of course. So how do you navigate that? Like, do you let do you see that when you see it coming? Because you're a wise guy, a smart guy, Clayton. When you see that coming, you're like, all right, I'm going to let this idiot outdo himself. And these guys just, you know, take these dumb risks. Well, like, how do you approach that? Yeah. So if there's a guy that thinks like my general playing style is fairly aggressive, like even more aggressive than the average professional player. So I take a lot of risks, especially early in the tournament. And sometimes there'll be a guy that's like, he gets a little butt hurt about that. Like he wants to be the table captain or whatever. And so he'll start talking trash to me. Now he doesn't want to do it with his chips because he doesn't want to lose those. Right. But he doesn't mind saying, Hey, you know, you keep playing like that. I'm going to get you sooner or later. You, you know, mother, F, you know, you start calling me every name in the book and trying right. to talk trash to me. Like he thinks he's trying to get inside my head. Right. But all he's really doing is revealing is revealing to me that he has now become extremely bluffable Yeah. because he doesn't want to get into a big pot with me unless he really has a very strong hand right. where he can teach me a lesson. Right. So I'm just going to bluff the wow. hell out of that guy. Wow. That's because, so obvious. That's yeah. it's funny because even when you were saying it, I was when he was asking the question, I was like, I'm going, well, how does this 
how does this evolve in a real way where the solution comes to you? And I, I guess that's why you always thought that I would be a good poker player because I don't even understand the game as much, but I understand that that the reveal, the yeah. trash talking is the reveal. Is the reveal. You know? He's letting me know what how I can beat him. And depending on the type of trash talk they do, like whether they're really hurt or what, you know, one time I had, uh, you know, this was many years ago. I had this you know, pretty girlfriend and she was behind me and she didn't work at the casino. She just came on the trip with me and she's massaging my shoulders and mm -hmm. all the guys are looking at her like, wow, you just sit here and rub his shoulders all day. Mm -hmm. And so this guy was really upset about that because he never had a pretty girl like that before. Right, right. And I knew how to beat him <laughs> because I could really rub his nose in it. Yeah, I made a lot of money that day. Yo, um, can you hang out a little bit? We want to do something on the Patreon. I want you to plug whatever you want to plug, and then we're going to do something behind the paywall. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm, I'm on Twitter, Clayton Comic. Um, yeah, I got a, a poker podcast. Is any poker players out there want to check it out? Tournament Poker Edge. Yeah, and I'm on all, all social media, Clayton Comic. And, you know, come see my comedy shows. Have some fun. No, no. Harry, talk to me. Uh, I am doing consultations now. And hey, you, can, you heard yeah. of that? Oh, Clay. yeah. yeah. I'm out there helping people. I'm having fun doing it. I'm learning a lot from it as well. We could talk about that in the Patreon, but uh, it's baby I'm, boys all grown up. Yeah, Dante. man. <laughs> trying, to, trying to pass on that wisdom that Dante showed me and uh, yes. for a whole other generation. And if you want to sign up for one, uh, if you want to see if we can set up a time for you, uh, email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. That's where you can reach me for the, the rates and we can organize it. And uh, at, at, it's a lot of it's been a lot of fun and helping people is great. And the feedback has been great, even from the the people. And I'm learning from them as well, which is very interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, I still do my consultations. Google me, bitch. Um, <laughs> go to uh, Dante .com, Click on consult. You can book time with me. Um, as well as, uh, uh, you know, all my social media, Dante Nero, you figure it out. Just Google me. You, it's all there, whatever, whatever platform it is. I'm, I'm on the internet. Um, and, uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all, man. We're going to check y'all on the Patreon side. If you really like what we're doing, fuck with us on the Patreon, please support us. This is how we keep doing it. We're trying to make a living at doing this, and we'd love to keep this information coming to y'all, so help yeah. us out. Head over to uh, patreon.com slash manschool202 for uh, bonus episodes like the one we're about to do with uh, Clayton right now. And believe me, things sometimes go down like the last week when we named names. So it's over. It's happening over at the Patreon. Patreon.com slash manschool202. Peace.